Can a CNC replace other tools like a drill press, planer, jointer, router tape? But more importantly, if it can accomplish these things, does it do a good job and is it a reasonable substitute for those other types of woodworking tools? Now, if you're immediately triggered by this video and you're ready to choke me through the screen right now, all that I ask for you to do is hang back for a few minutes because we're gonna try some things out. The results may be good, they may be bad, and I'm not gonna try to sugarcoat anything. I'm a CNC enthusiast, but I'm also a woodworker and I wanna see what works and what doesn't. So I've got one rule. Before you start spamming me in the comments and reporting me at the next man club meeting, at least hear me out. Let's see what happens. Let's see what works and what doesn't. So our first task is going to see how a CNC can actually joint boards. Now, keep in mind that if you need to joint long boards for a tabletop or cabinets or anything like that, um, a CNC is probably not going to be a good choice just simply because of the size of it. In my shop, I mostly make small projects, decor, and that kind of thing. So I wanted to see how it would do with uh, jointing a 12-inch piece of material. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, the two pieces of material that I'm using are white oak and a little purple heart. I don't use purple heart that much, but I picked up some from uh, Woodcraft. And what's funny is once I planed it down, it actually looks more brown than purple. Uh, tends to do that as it dries out and ages. So I'm just using a simple quarter inch down cut bit and I'm just getting a straight edge here. That's all that we're doing. Once we have that, let's just put it together face to face and see what happens. And it looks really nice. You know, CNC is computerized. It's meant to be accurate and guess what? It surely is. So when we take a look at this board, it does appear that a CNC does a great job of jointing small boards together, uh, but I want to see what it looks like when it's glued up. So let's just do, do a simple glue up. Now I'm not worried about putting calls on it because this really is just a, uh, a test. So I'm going to use a couple of my smaller uh, clamps and just clamp it together and see how it does. When I'm finished, I'll sand it off and see if we can make it nice and even. Because I'll end up using this wood for something. Okay, so now let's let those boards dry. And while we're waiting on that to dry, let's shift gears and see if we can use a CNC to replace a thickness planer. Now, thickness planers reduce the thickness of your board, but they can also be used in certain situations to remove cups and bows. So we're really going to try and see if we can use that CNC and specifically a one inch surfacing bit to remove a bow from a board. Now, I'll leave a link to the surfacing bit that I use down in the description below. Uh, I've used this method before and it's fairly reliable. You can also use a planer uh, if you'd like to take out cups and bows uh, on smaller pieces. Doesn't work that well with warped wood uh, unless you create a planer sled, which that's a whole other animal that we're not worried about right now. So this surfacing bit does seem to be doing the job. You'll notice that I did countersink the screws. Make sure that those screws are countersunk way down so that your bit doesn't hit them. All right, we use a level and it seems to be in really good shape. So uh, with that, I'm just gonna pull out the old handy dandy Black & Decker sander and I'm gonna sand this off to get rid of some of those burn marks, which aren't extreme, but there are a couple of burn marks on there. Now, what are my thoughts on using your CNC to remove cups, bows, or using it as a thickness planer? Personally, as a thickness planer, I would rather use my planer. I have a DeWalt 735 and I prefer to actually use it. It's much faster, it's much more efficient. However, a CNC with a surfacing bit can be used to easily get rid of cups and bows. So I think that is a worthwhile use right there. From there, let's just look at a couple of utility uses for your CNC. And one great one that I actually really do like, is uh, using it to create plugs. Just hold on to old scrap pieces. You can secure them down with a double-sided tape or CA glue and painter's tape and just create plugs as you need them. I'm gonna move over to my cheap AF bandsaw that I've never quite gotten calibrated correctly. 
and uh, let's cut out these little plugs. All right, once we have them cut out, I just put a little glue in there. You didn't need to see that. It's wood glue. Pop them in there with a mallet and then use a flush cut saw to cut everything as even as we can. Once we have that done, I'll just use the sander and I'll sand it flat and it looks great. All right, so this one I actually like. This is a great way to put to use scrap wood that you might otherwise throw away. Just hold on to it so that you can use it to cut plugs out of. Now, you don't have a CNC? Fine, go buy a plug cutter. You can pop it into your drill press, no problem. But if you have a CNC, you can easily make a plug file, and whenever you need some fresh plugs, just pop it on your CNC, cut out some new plugs. Okay, now why would you even consider using a CNC to create plugs when you can just as easily get dowels and use them? And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. I do it all the time. If you're looking for a particular kind of material for your plugs, that can be difficult if you're just using dowels. Also, if you're using dowels, you're going to cut them using the end grain. So once you actually plug them in there, they have a tendency to soak up more finish, stain, anything like that, and they'll turn out darker than the material that you're trying to match it up with and cover with. Now, you can easily do what I've done and choose two different species of wood. So it isn't meant to hide it, it turns into an accent. But if you're looking for something that will match the wood grain, then instead of using an end grain dowel, uh, cutting your plugs out of a face grain, either using a CNC or a plug cutter can be a better solution. Okay, the next question that we're gonna ask is, can we use a CNC for a typical router table? And I know, it's a router. So we kind of know the answer to that, but we're going to look at a couple of options there. First of all, I would not recommend that if you were to try this, that you use a bit like this that has a pilot bearing on the end. These pilot bearings are meant to ride alongside a template or possibly the edge of your material so that when you're hand routing, it won't go in any further and you've got a natural stop right there. So if we were to try to use this in a CNC and we were slightly off, then the CNC might try to force this pilot bearing into the material, breaking the bit or possibly damaging the router or our material. So we're going to stay away from this one. But I am going to use this little cove bit and I'm going to see how it does. I really don't apply many chamfers or anything like that to most of my projects. It's just not the style that I typically work with, but I do have this cove bit, so we're gonna give it a shot. So let's jump over and see how it does. Now you do need to make sure that you get your uh, X and Y Per, as perfect as you can, because if it's slightly off, it could go too deep. And personally, I feel that it went a little bit too deep right here. So I'm not really a fan of using a CNC for this purpose unless you have it calibrated. So did it work? Sure seemed to. Uh, I didn't think we'd have a problem with it, but I thought it would be an interesting thing to give a shot. And it's good to know. Now, will I probably do much edge routing using this method? Probably not. I like conventional woodworking. I like using my router and I like finishing my projects myself. Also, there's not much room for error. If you are slightly off on your X, Y, or Z, um, it's possible that you could cut too deep or not deep enough. And so in my opinion, it's just as easy to hand route these edges most of the time but it is an option. So with that, let's head on over and see how our joinery worked out. All right, now that the glue is dried, I'll take off the clamps. Now, because I didn't use any calls, there is a little bit of a lip on it, very slight, because it's a small board. So I'll just sand it off right here. And let's take a look now that everything's nice and glued up. Uh, I will say that jointing with a CNC is a huge success. 
This is probably my favorite application of using a CNC for conventional woodworking purposes. Okay, so what are my thoughts on using your CNC as a jointer? Um, in a pinch, it can do the trick. I currently don't have a joiner um, and I mostly do smaller projects. So if I need a perfect jointed edge, I will use my CNC to do that. An investment in a joiner in my shop is in the near future because as I start creating larger projects, I think the CNC might have a hard time with that because my CNC is only 32 by 32 inches, which limits the size of wood that I can effectively joint. But as you saw, it did give a great finish, so there's no arguing the actual results. Okay, so what are my thoughts on using your CNC in place of a drill press and Forstner bits? It can actually be very handy because you can perfectly space out your holes by creating a CNC project. Also, you don't have to have specific size bits because you can easily use your CNC and make the diameter of those holes any size that you like. Now you will wanna make sure that if you are making, for example, a quarter inch hole and you're using a quarter inch bit, that that bit's an upcut bit. If it's a downcut bit, it pushes the material down into the pocket and there's no place for it to escape. So it basically catches on fire. You don't want that to happen. So always make sure to use an upcut bit if you're using your CNC as a drill press. And since you're still here, you're probably interested in CNC related content. So check out this video right here. It is a 15 month review of my Onefinity uh, Woodworker X50. I have zero relationship with Onefinity. Uh, it's not sponsored at all. This is just what I think about it 15 months after I bought it and put it to use.